<laughs> so me looks like these two guys cycling and they look disgusted and it's like me and my buddy cycling away from Christian University after we didn't find a wife. <laughs> everyone, my name is Rebecca and I'm the expert. Wait, no, actually, they are the expert. Uh, you're not the expert. I'm the expert. You're out. <laughs> yes, that's what we're doing. Erin and Emma are going to play a game called I'm the expert. They would draw a topic from the pot and give their expert opinion on it. The timer starts once they start talking. If they say a filler word like uh or um, the timer stops and the next person draws a topic and starts talking. The first person to accumulate 5 minutes of filler-free talk time wins. Without further Is ado, let the game begin! Who wants to draw first? Loser starts. Okay, are we going best of three? Okay, fine, best of three. Okay. Scissors, Scissors, paper, paper stone, 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 stone. 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 <laughs> Psych. Okay. I hate the sound this makes with a passion. The world is a cylinder and you can fight me on that. Have you seen the sea? Have you seen the sea? The sea is round. Water molecules are round and round things fit in cans. And that is why the world is a cylinder. Because you know, if the molecules weren't round, then what would they be? They'd be squares. Who wants a square molecule? Nothing would work if molecules were squares. Would they join together the same way? Who knows? I'm not a scientist. I'm definitely not the expert. But the world is definitely a cylinder because when you look up at the sky, you look straight. You can't look across. This is Singapore. There are too many buildings everywhere. You just can't. And you know, oh. <sighs> She's just gonna win straight up. I thought she was gonna go to five minutes on her first run. I know! <laughs> but that was a good 37 seconds. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was good, that what was good. What have I gotten myself into here? Okay. <laughs> this will confer upon me the power. The power. He's got the power! I am the expert on how to trim camel hooves. The biggest problem in trimming camel hooves is not actually getting a big enough trimmer. It's finding the correct camel. <laughs> now, there are lots of camels out there, and some will cooperate with you and some will not. And they, there are like some key ways that I've learned over the years through a lot of trial, a lot of error, a lot of pain, and a lot of lost business partners oh. to find the best profile of the camel who will cooperate with your nail trimming. So here we go. We have three things which you look out for when you're trimming a camel's hooves or when you're picking the correct candidate to trim a camel's hooves. So first of all, you need a camel with a long face. If they have a long face, it means they're sad and they have less energy to fight with you when you are trimming their hooves, right? That just makes sense. It's science. Next, you need a camel that has hooves because if they don't have hooves, you can't trim said hooves, all right? And then you need a camel that is all natural and organic because we wouldn't want to do anything that is bad for the environment when we are trimming their hooves because we're not going to throw away their hooves, we're just going to leave them there because I'm not paid to do that. I'm only paid to trim their hooves, not dispose of them. So if the hooves are not organic, then they're not going to decompose when I leave them on the ground. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be involved in something immoral like that. So after you find your perfect candidate, then you've got to get your trimmer. And your trimmer can be either electric or manual. Now, the benefits of the electric one is that it's dentist recommended. And it has a nice timer that tells you when you're done for two minutes. Are we talking about... Oh, we're talking about who... Oh, right, I thought we were talking about teeth. Okay. Yeah, you can have an electric one. And you've got you've to crank it up to start it. Like a lawnmower. <laughs> and you need to have a strong arm to do that. And so it is important to go to the gym if you are a camel hoof trimmer. I personally prefer the electronic ones. Because they are more entertaining and entertainment is a big part of my life so <laughs> i get there i find the perfect candidate i have my camel hoof trimmer and i crank it up and then here's the difficult part the camel is going to get scared and run away because you would too if some guy with a buzz saw I mean, no 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 professional camel hoof electronic trimmer was coming towards your toes and and you would panic too so you have to get some person who is brave but someone you don't like that much because they're in danger 
uh, you need them to cover the camel's ears and eyes. And it's kind of tricky. You've got to use your one hand to cover the eyes and the other hand to cover the ears. And like when both, it's pretty tricky, but you can manage it. And and so you start trimming the camel's hooves. I always start from the front left. Uh, it's personally my, my favorite one. And then you got to try and get the hoof off in one nice slice so that the hoof is like flush with the rest of the leg. And um, yeah, I like to get off in one nice slice because that you is said, more um, satisfying. He said, um. Oh, I said, um. Yeah. Oh, that dang. Was three minutes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's crazy. I think the key is it doesn't have to make a lot of sense. You just gotta keep talking. My name's Emma, and I'm the expert on different types of magic lamps. So first of all, I want to explain my top three favorite magic lamps to you. There's the blue lamp. This one's got the genie. There's the purple lamp. This one makes you have good grades. And there's the red lamp. This one makes sure that you don't accidentally set anything on fire. We don't need to get into why I'm the expert on not setting things on fire. So with the blue lamp, you know, you got your genie, you got your average Joe, you know, he's cool. He's cool. He wants to be your friend. He wants to help you. He wants to become a person who you can trust. And, you know, he'll give you three wishes and he's just so versatile because of that. You can use those three wishes on absolutely anything. You want to solve world hunger, start a nuclear war, anything. He can do that for you. The second lamp, I mean, good grades are good grades. As Asians, grades are very important to us. Is this racial profiling? Maybe. I don't know if it's allowed, but you know, Grades are very important to us. You want to get somewhere in life, you got to have a decent grade. You got to get to college so that you can meet, you can you can find a girlfriend or whatever it is, whatever people do in college apart from get diplomas. I don't know. My parents, they just went to college and they were they said, you know, school's great and all, but let's get married. That, they didn't actually say that. They dated in their final year and that was a wreck because they were all supposed to take their final exams and it was a huge distraction. I don't know if it was. I don't know if this is accurate. I'm just going off. So you got to find, you got to, you got to, you got to get that fantastic, fantastic, good college great genie lamp. And the last lamp is the don't set things on fire lamp. So I'm going to tell you a story. Back in 2002, when I was a wee fetus, I wasn't even born yet. When I was a wee fetus, I had a mission and that was to achieve world domination how I would come into this world in 2003, exactly a year later, and I would come out with a bang. I would just go out there and I would do my thing and I would take over the world and nobody would have to understand me for it. And how would I do that? I would meet my producer, John, and I, you're playing right into my cards right now, John. This, this is step one. This is only the beginning and I'm not stopping from here. I am going to find many, many things that are not flammable. Actually, no, I did set my kitchen on fire once, but that wasn't exactly my fault. That was more my grandma. She put newspaper around her pot and the pot was for some reason not sitting on the stove properly. And I don't even know how it happened because we've got an electric stove. It's not even gas, but the newspaper caught fire because of that. So that was an experience. Once I was in Mongolia and, um, oops. Oh, <laughs> that was good. 335, wow. 335. Uh, oh, wow, I'm doing better. Oh my gosh, wait, well, I, I don't know how much better I'm doing, but I'm doing better than I, I'm going against myself here. Okay. I kept wanting to interject, dang. It was, it was I, difficult. I had to hold that. Thank you for not interrupting. <laughs> it was a fun story. I'm the expert on how Roman statues are made. So I'm going to interpret this paper as saying Roman, but it could very well say Roman. And I really don't know which one it is. But I'm going to talk about both because I happen to be an expert in both Roman and and Roman statues. So Roman statues are statue are the stoned pieces of stone that are depicting various creatures and things and people. And they were made by people named Romans who lived in Italy a long time ago. So when you make a statue, you've got to use a hammer 
and hit a piece of rock as hard as possible. Now they'll tell you the most important thing about sculpting is like your sculptor's eye and your practice and your vision and your dedication. No, 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 no. What's most important is that you have a strong hand and a big hand when you smack the rock as hard as you can. Because, like Michelangelo, the great Italian sculptor said, he didn't make sculptures, he just revealed something that was already inside the stone. So I'm going to interpret that from one of the greats as you just need to hit the rock as hard as you can with a hammer and something's going to come out. And whether it's nice or not, I don't really know. That's just your luck. So you hit the, with the hammer as hard as you can. No, you hit the rock as hard as you can with a hammer and maybe something will come out. Now, don't do this with statues that other people have already finished. Like some guy tried that with the Pieta in the chapel in, in Italy and it didn't go very well for him. So don't do that. Now, what about Roman statue? What's a Roman statue? So a Roman statue comes from China when they had these things called dragon boat races. They used to have- Five minutes! Outside. Yeah! Oh my gosh, that was so fast. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, dude, you my know what I was like? Tough. <laughs> I was like, Three things. What was the first thing that I said? Right, right. right. <laughs> you, you sort of have to like build the bridge that you're walking on. Yeah, I have time. no idea if anything I said about my parents was accurate. So they did meet in their final year. They did meet in their final year. And my grandma was like... Seriously, of all of the years you could have chosen to date somebody that year? <laughs> This has been I'm the Expert with Emma and Aaron. As you can clearly tell, we are not the experts on anything. Certainly not genie lamps and trimming camel hooves because they don't actually have hooves, apparently. We Googled right. that. we Googled it. Yeah, they got toes and they got toenails. So, we're clearly not the expert. Please don't take anything we said in this video seriously. We don't mean to hurt or harm anybody. Especially not the camels. Especially not the camels. <laughs> If you liked this, you can find us on Instagram at the.sociallyawkwardpodcast and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and basically any major listening platform at the Socially Awkward Podcast. We'll see you next time. Bye.